Yosh. What is going on Yosh Nation? This is Gnarly Rick and today I'm bringing you an absolutely beast tutorial on how to improve your connection for Modern Warfare 3 or any other online game. You'll see how that works when we get into this. And the demonstration is going to be on the PS3, but you can do this just as readily on the Xbox. You're just going to be using a different interface and using a few different numbers that you can look up and you'll see how to do that in this tutorial. Now I want to talk a little bit towards lag compensation before we start this off. I think that whenever anybody has any issues with their network nowadays, in Modern Warfare 3, it's all pointed at lag compensation, and that's just not the case. You know, people have different issues, lag happens for different reasons. Um, I'm going to give you an analogy here. Let's say that you're trying to fill a small pool up in your backyard with water so you can cool off. You know, it's a nice hot summer, whatever. And the city says, no, 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 you have the fastest water flow in the city, so we're going to limit you, right? Just like a connection with this game, people think that they limit them, and, and they do to some extent. So you say to the city, well, I'll teach you. I'm going to kink my hose and fill up the pool faster. Now, it doesn't make any sense for water, and it, it also doesn't make any sense for your connection. Making your connection worse on purpose does not make your connection better overall in the game. Everyone's going to get hit as a host, you know, once in a while, and it's better to have a strong connection through all the games than it is to limit yourself. So, what I want to do now is I want to get into just you know, some details on how to do this step-by-step -step instructions and help people out. Um, I gotta say, you're doing this at your own risk. I am not a networking expert. I've just learned this throughout the different Call of Duty games, and I've become very comfortable with making these changes on the fly on my own with my own network. So I hope this helps everybody out, and uh, let's get into it. So the first thing you're going to want to do here, you're going to want to get some information about your computer. So you're going to go to the Start menu. You're going to type in CMD. To bring up your command prompt and you're going to type in IP config slash all. Now this is going to pull up all the networking information about your computer and I know it's a big mix mash of stuff and that seems to confuse people but all you're really interested is in, is some certain numbers here. So you're going to see some stuff is blocked out here because I, I need to protect my own privacy and my own network but the physical address here you're going to want to write down. Uh, you're also going to want to write down your IP v4 address which is basically the address to the computer you're using right now and you might not even use it it depends on the situation but each each thing in your network is going to use a different end code here so this one's uh, hooked up to 0 0.104 my iPod might be at 0 0.103 my Xbox might be at 0 0.102 and each time they disconnect and reconnect it might be a different ending number and that's called a dynamic IP address. So what we're going to do with the PS3 or Xbox is we're going to set a static one so that it's always the same number and all of the f ports you're forwarding and all of the, you know, the DMZ that you might want to set up, they're going to know exactly where to find your system because it's never changing. You're also going to want to write down the subnet mask and this should be the same. I've never seen it any different. It's just 255, 255, 2550 and you are going to want the default gateway because that needs to be entered as well so make sure to write down the default gateway and your DNS server so you're going to need I think some people may have one or two or three I have three listed here um, you really only need one in order to set up the network but I usually input two because there's an option for two and I just take the first two so uh, write down any DNS server numbers you have there and make sure to have those on hand Okay, so to set a static IP for your system, whether it's an Xbox or a PS3, I'm showing the PS3 dashboard here, but for Xbox, just find the same area and you're going to plug in the same numbers in the, sa in the exact same way. Um, you're going to want to find your network settings, go to internet connection settings. Uh, you're going to want to choose custom here, don't choose easy. Now, this is decided by how your network is set up. Now, Obviously, most things are wireless here uh, in people's homes today. I have my wireless PS3, and then my iPhone hooks up wirelessly, and my, you know, my Xbox, and everything else that's in this house is pretty much wireless. But I'm going to give you a little warning here. If you hook up your PS3 or your Xbox as a wired connection because you think it's stronger, and then later on when you try and run the quality of service, which is is basically giving a stronger connection to your system but everything else in the house is wireless, it's not going to work. So 
you have to have everything on the same system. It all has to be wired or it all has to be wireless or you can't do the quality of service. That doesn't mean you can't get a really good connection because those are, you know, there's other things we can do that you'll see. But as a little warning here, when you're setting this up, make sure that everything's on the same network and you're choosing that option. So since my PS3 is wireless and everything else in my house is wireless, I'm going to choose wireless. Uh, I'm going to enter manually now this is blocked out for my own privacy but <clears throat> this information here is basically what you're gonna put in is what you would put into your router to log in WPA PSK WPA 2 PSK because that's the encryption I'm using that's blocked out as a standard um, so just put your password in whatever you would put into your router and you're gonna choose manual for your IP address. Now this is the information we wrote down and this is what you need to put in here. So your IP address, as I was saying before, it's going to be 192.168.1. something. This is the static IP we're setting up for the PS3 or Xbox. Now the N number here, as I was saying before, can't get in the way of those fluctuating numbers of all the other wireless devices in your house. So as I was saying, if you turn your Xbox off and it was .104 and then the next day you boot it back up again, there might be your iPod in that area, so it'll do .103. Whatever's open, it will do. That's the dynamic IP. So here you want to set those last numbers something that's completely out of the way. So I chose, you know, .58, which isn't my actual number. For privacy reasons, I changed it for this, but that would work. You could go higher than those numbers. You could do .158. You could do .159, as long as it's not in the range of the five or six devices that are hooking up around your house. And that way it will never get confused, and it will constantly be static. The subnet mask, as I said, I've never seen this number any different. Uh, enter what you got off of your command prompt when you wrote it down earlier. Default router, uh, same thing, enter your default router. Now primary DNS and secondary DNS, don't panic if you only have one number here. You actually only need one number to run this network, but I put both in because I have three listed. So if you have one, two, or three, enter what you have. Moving forward, MTU automatic, proxy server do not use, and UPnP enable. Now. I would take a quick look over this and make sure everything's exactly how you wanted it. Hit enter. Now you're welcome to test your connection if you want. I'm not going to do that because I know that everything works properly here. And I think it gives you a connection speed for upload and download as well. So, Okay, so now that we have our static IP set up on the PS3, we are going to go to this web page, uh, portforward.com, so www.portforward.com. And this is the most incredible website I've ever seen if you need to forward ports for any game on any router. So the first thing you want to do is hit the router list. And that's going to give you a giant selection of routers here. So if you don't know which router you have, it goes by brand name, and then the sticker on your router will tell you the model number. You just have to look for, kind of, it's usually a little shiny stick, like silver sticker, and it'll give you all the information. So I know that mine is the WRT54GS Linksys. I'm going to click on that. It's going to give you an ad page. Don't be fooled. Just click here to skip this advertisement. And it's going to take you to a gaming page. Now, whether you're Xbox or PS3, uh, what you want to do is you don't want to just go to the Call of Duty area under C over here. Because for some reason, I don't know why, but it didn't give me all the ports I needed. And I was very confused as to why my connection didn't change. But I did realize that they specialized it and they put it under PS3 for myself or Xbox if you if you're running an Xbox uh, they put it under PS3 why did I go up so high there where is it here? PS3 Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 now this had all of the connection settings that I needed so it's going to give you the first step and do not skip this this is where you want to enter the static IP that you gave your system and that's because it changes everything on the web page below. Uh, the next thing that you're going to need to do as you're reading through this that's very important is when you get into your router and I would recommend having your router page open while you're doing this just kind of side by side uh, you want to make sure that block anonymous internet request is unchecked and the reason for that is because that's huge for online gaming connections and just make sure everything matches here perfectly and I'll give you a quick look down here uh, it's going to show you all the ports to open 
and as you can see it put my own static IP address in there so you should be able to just have your router page open have this open on the side and literally follow it step by step to set up uh, your port forward ranges so I've already logged into my router here uh, for privacy reasons I did that beforehand but you would just put your username and password in and log into your router if you haven't done that yet and you're still running the default password that came with your router you need to go onto Google you need to look up your router brand name and model and find out what the default password is you need to plug that in and change your password because you're completely vulnerable to people accessing your router if you're running the one that came out of the factory so either way I logged in here I'm going to go to your applications and gaming tab and port for or port range forward this is where all the information from that web page is going to go in so the first one doesn't doesn't matter that's for a separate issue um, modern warfare 3 a b c d e f is what i'm using and these i'm are not in use right now they're just kinda sitting there from old things uh... and the, so obviously the check marks here are what i'm using so there's the the ports that i'm forwarding um, both is what you want to set them on you don't want to set them on tcp or udp you want to set them on both and then here's our static ip address for our system so basically what this is doing is it's opening these these gateways for information uh... on our router and it's saying that it wants them sent directly to our ps3 so that should give you a dramatic change in connection speed now if you're running those testers you sometimes you can get testers and you might even see one pop up on portforward.com that says can i test if your port is open those usually test udp or tcp so it might come back that your port isn't open even though it is because these are set on both when i tested them from the one from portforward.com that i downloaded it told me they weren't open which wasn't true because i was getting really good connections out of it so i wouldn't recommend using those testers just as a side note now what you might also want to consider doing is a dmz which is this tab right here now when i click on that it's very simple i basically put my ps3 static ip address in and then i hit save settings and obviously enable now what you need to be careful here of is that this opens all of the ports available so in port range forward where you forwarded specific ports this opens all of the ports now the reason I do both of them personally and this is your own choice as I said before you have to make your own choices on your own network the reason I do both is because on standard routers sometimes the DMZ doesn't completely work properly so I have these as a backup so if this isn't working properly then they are forwarded perfectly here, right here so for this demo I've changed all the numbers from my real computer numbers to just fake ones and um, the last option that we might want to run is the quality of service now this is basically run for if you have many people using many different things in your house so I set the quality of service enabled and on auto upstream bandwidth I didn't want to mess with that I actually looked into doing different things so that I could limit specific connections but the auto works pretty well um, device name is us and other now right here is where you use that physical address from the command prompt that I was talking about the physical address is the same way as saying a MAC address and you'll see that right up here it says MAC address uh, in your command prompt it was called a physical address they're the same thing so you're gonna wanna put your PS3's physical address which is in the internet connection settings and then you're gonna wanna put something else so maybe you have you know a brother that downloads excessive amounts of stuff and you just want to get a little bit more connection to your system well you're gonna put your physical address here and you're gonna put highest you're gonna put your brother's physical address there you're gonna put lowest and that doesn't mean that they're not gonna get any connection speed that just means that it's not gonna lag your game out they'll still be downloading they'll still be doing their thing and it's not really gonna change very much for them so if you are confused as to where to get that physical address so that you can get priority over the computer or other gaming system or whatever else is going on in the house if you need to know where to find that there's some ways you can do it through the command prompt but I find the easiest way for people that aren't familiar with networking and what I do is you can download a program called network magic and it's a free trial and they let you keep a basic version after the free trial and it gives you a good amount of information here so you have a a network map that you can use that looks like this and then it shows you each individual device connected to your network so this is obviously the laptop I'm using right now and it's the main connection that's got this program on it and you don't need to download this on every 
different device within the house you can if you want but just on this computer it will show me all the different devices I can view the details and it's gonna give me the Mac address which as I said before is very similar to the physical address so I would write that down um, after I'm sure that that's the device that I'm looking to modify uh, for quality of service and then I would just plug it in right here and set it to low so now my PS3 or as I labeled it us and I mean you can change this it doesn't really matter that could be PS3 um, and other and I'm getting a higher connection quality of service over those other ones now as I was saying before um, Ethernet port priority this right here this is for if you're running a wired connection. So as I was saying before, if you're running all this wireless stuff and your PS3 is wired, then you have nothing to set low. So you would set yourself as high and enable it, but then everything else on the network is wireless, so there's nothing else to set here. You can't cross these over. Uh, you have to either run wired or wireless, or there's nothing to set it against. I hope that makes sense. I know it could be a little bit confusing, but in this case, I'm running everything wirelessly, and I've set those up. Um, and then down here you'll notice that I actually messed around with some of the ports for Modern Warfare 3. So the ports that had single ports I entered them in and I tried using them and I'm not sure if it, it really increased the connection all that well. It might have, it might not have, but I kind of left it unchecked and it seems to run well without it. But if you're still having a lot of problems getting that connection to your PS3, which I don't see how you could be, um, you're welcome to plug in the ports from your port forwarding ranges that were given off of portforward.com. You know, there's 80, 81, 443, and you could check optimized gaming application, and it should be putting those ports first and passing the information to those first. And then you're going to hit uh, WMM support enable. That's what makes it wireless, the wi wireless quality of service, and save settings. So as you can see through all of this, uh, there's a lot of settings there. I'm hoping that was really straightforward and that people understood what I was saying. If you have any other questions, please feel free to send me PMs on YouTube. I try and help as many people as I can. And through running this, I've had incredible connections. Like, absolutely incredible. So, I'm hoping this helped people out. And this is Gnarly Rick, signing out. Peace. <laughs>